Hello, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here. Um, I am going to talk a little bit about ethics and innovation, um, particularly in the military context. As I go through, I'm going to kind of highlight what I think are some principles we need to consider. These are not, I don't intend this to become some kind of doctrine. Um, they are certainly uh, rules of thumbs, thumb rather than some kind of fixed principles. Uh, some of them are fairly general about innovation as a, as a general thing. Some are a bit more specific. Um, but really, I'm just trying to get a, a, a discussion going. Um, some of the, uh, the points I'll raise do segue quite, or do uh, link up quite neatly with what Ian has been saying. So um, that, that wasn't coordinated, but um, is a useful thing. So I, just to get a sense, how many of you have seen this little short video, Slaughterbots? OK, a handful. What I'm going to do is, um, in just a second, I'm going to show you uh, just about three minutes of it. It's about a seven minute long video. But a bit of the context of that, I'm on a, uh, in a panel called the International Panel for the Regulation of Autonomous Weapons. We've been meeting in Berlin over this past year, and we'll, we'll continue to do so over the next year. And the idea of that panel is to feed into the, uh, or to give guidance to uh, those who are involved in the UN's CCW process looking at autonomous weapons. And at the last meeting in Geneva, I didn't get to go, but um, some of my, my fellow panelists were there. Just before the last meeting of the, uh, the CCW looking at autonomous weapons, another group involved in this released this video. Um, so that's the context of this. Uh, so I'll, we'll just show about three minutes of that. It allows you to separate the bad guys from the good. It's a big deal. But we have something much bigger. Your kids probably have one of these, right? Not quite. Hell of a pilot? No. <coughs> that skill is all AI. It's flying itself. Its processor can react a hundred times faster than a human. The stochastic motion is an anti-sniper feature. Just like any mobile device these days, it has cameras and sensors, and just like your phones and social media apps, it does facial recognition. Inside here is three grams of shaped explosive. This is how it works. Did you see that? That little bang is enough to penetrate the skull and destroy the contents. They used to say guns don't kill people. People do. Well, people don't. They get emotional, disobey orders, aim high. Let's watch the weapons make the decisions. Now, trust me, these were all bad guys. Now that is an airstrike of surgical precision. It's one of a range of products. Trained as a team, they can penetrate buildings, cars, trains, evade people, bullets, pretty much any countermeasure. They cannot be stopped. Now, I said this was big. Why? Because we are thinking big. Watch. A $25 million order now buys this. Enough to kill half a city. The bad half. Nuclear is obsolete. Take out your entire enemy, virtually risk-free. Just characterize him, release the swarm, and rest easy. These are available today. We have a distribution network taking orders from military, law enforcement, and specialist clients. The nation is still recovering from yesterday's incident, which officials are describing as some kind of automated attack, which killed 11 U.S. senators at the Capitol building. They flew in from everywhere, but attacked just one side of the aisle. It was chaos. People were screaming. You can see high windows, very small, precisely punctured to gain entry to the building. What did you do for the victim? I just did what I could for him. Things weren't even interested in me. They're just buzzing. Government right sources admit the intelligence community has no idea who perpetrated the attack. 
nor whether it was a state, group, or even a single individual. All right, uh, so um, I'm, I'm going to stop it there in the interest of time, and also because I kind of want you to go back and watch it again to see the end. Um, I will tell you how it goes on. Uh, towards the end, there's a, a, a part where um, the, the bad guys, whoever they are, we don't know who they are, uh, dispatch some of these autonomous drones uh, and end up killing a whole bunch of um, university students at, at campuses around the world, seemingly because they, uh, they liked or, or forward or... Um, yeah, passed on a video online that the whoever it was behind this didn't approve of. So it's a, it's kind of scary stuff. It's a it's a pretty uh, frightening scenario. Um, and obviously the intention of the video, it's a, a very well produced uh, little little fil short film, um, is to make us afraid of autonomous weapons, which is one of the kind of big areas of uh, innovation. I, I don't particularly want to talk about autonomous weapons in this presentation, but I want to draw on that and try to bring out some, some principles as we go along. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is just pick out some of the statements that are made uh, in, the, uh, in the short film and just think about those a little bit. So one of the things that he says, the, uh, the Steve Jobs of death up there on the stage, is that people get emotional, they disobey orders, uh, they aim high, right? So the suggestion is we, we can't trust them. Well, that's sometimes true, um, but people also do other things. People also negotiate which machines tend not to do, uh, people innovate, and people often show humanity. Um, so the first principle I think we should uh, keep in mind with all of this, any kind of innovation that we do, is that military uh, innovation should seek to compensate for human shortcomings, but not remove humanity from the, the uh, um, practice of warfighting. Right? We need human beings, we need humans, we need humanity to be engaged with that. All right, here's the other, another statement that he says from the stage. Now, trust me, so this is the bit where the, he's got that little airstrike going in. Uh, these were all bad guys. Of course, we don't trust him for a minute, do we? That's the whole point of the video. Um, but it does raise this issue about trust. Trust is critical, particularly in a democracy. Uh, we've talked a little bit about that this morning, uh, about who, who we all work for, what we're here for. It's about serving the democracy. Trust is critical. And trust and accountability go hand in hand. So... When we're thinking about any kind of innovation, um, it should involve trust, it should involve um, accountability. If we're, if we're doing something that's gonna remove accountability, that's a problem. That doesn't mean we shouldn't use that innovation, but perhaps we need to add or, or layer over it other innovations that help us to improve accountability and therefore trust. Trust is critical. Uh, another thing he says, now that is a precision, uh, an airstrike, airstrike of surgical precision certainly is. Um, and I want to say precision is a good thing, right? Um, it seems to me that this is better than that. That seems pretty obvious in the ethics of war. Uh, if we can be more precise, it gives us the ability uh, to be more discriminate. Uh, that is a, clearly a good thing. Um, so for all the uh, kind of negative vibe of his, his statement, I think it's a solid statement. And I think in principle, military innovation should seek to improve military effectiveness while dis dis decreasing destructiveness. That's the challenge for us. Be more effective, achieve our military goals whilst being as less and less destructive as we go about it. That's, I think, a, a kind of general principle we should be looking at. They cannot be stopped. That's scary. It's also nonsense, right? Um, there are always countermeasures. Uh, any study of the history of, of military s uh, development shows that you get uh, measures and then countermeasures. Uh, we don't need to go that far back, but here's, here's a way, going, going way back, looking at, at crossbows, right? There was a point when this was the terrifying weapon of the time because armor couldn't stop a crossbow bolt. Um, so in, I think it was uh, 1190, the, pa the Pope decided that we should ban crossbows, or at least crossbows couldn't be used against other Christians, put it that way. Um, <laughs> but of course there were... Uh, countermeasures. Countermeasures are always going to happen. So I think as a principle, um, fear of new capabilities shouldn't replace thoughtful discussion about ethics, right? Just going, this is scary. Well, that's good. That should clue us up that there's an ethics discussion to be had there. But I think the knee-jerk reaction is unhelpful. $25 million buys enough of these uh, little uh, slaughter bots to kill half a city, the bad half, right? Again, we don't trust him for a moment. Um, that's part of the problem. Who decides which is the bad half of a city? 
Um, but still, I think it flags up this important point, and I'm not the first person to say it today, fighting in cities is one of the biggest challenges facing liberal democracies. We have to think about how we do that. Uh, whether it's fighting in cities, avoiding fighting in cities, finding ways to, to not fight in cities, um, or doing things in cities that achieve military effect, but we can avoid fighting if we can. This is one of our biggest areas of challenge, and I think that's going to be one of the... It's, a, it's an ethical imperative for us to think of ways we can do that. If autonomous weapons help us to do that to some extent, we need to consider that very seriously. Uh, if the option is uh, a new technology that we're a little uncomfortable with, um, or killing lots of people with high explosives, we need to take that as a very serious uh, tick in the, in the one side of the, that uh, calculation. Take out your entire enemy virtually risk-free. This is supposed to, uh, well, and I think it does, um, pluck at our kind of emotional response that, hey, there's something wrong with that. Right? There's something wrong with doing things that are risk-free. And of course, there, it's a lie, right? There, is, there are no um, activities that we do are, that are risk-free, but we can reduce risk. Um, and I think it's entirely appropriate to innovate, to do things that reduce risk to our soldiers. States have a responsibility to their, their, um, their military personnel to look after them and protect them as much as they possibly can. This is not something that we should think is, a, is a, an ethical negative. Uh, so, fundamentally, it's not a bad thing. However, when, we, when we're um, dealing with risk, often what we're doing is not taking it away. Sometimes we can take some risk away, but often what we're doing is moving it around. Right? And if what we're doing is shifting risk from us to non-combatants, there's a real ethical question there. Right? Where, where should the risk lie? And we've got to consider that very seriously. So, generally, this, this idea ties in with a, a debate that we, we've got at the moment that it's about lowering the threshold for uh, using military force. So if, if anybody can do this, it's going to happen more often. That's kind of the, the general idea. Well, maybe, but lowering the threshold for the use of force is itself ethically neutral because it's what that force is used for that matters ethically, not that that force is used. There are uh, circumstances in which it is entirely appropriate to use force, force ethically. And so lowering the threshold that enables you to do that can be a morally good thing, or it can be a bad thing. It depends what we do with it. So I think generally, in principle, lowering the threshold of the use of force is an ethical neutral. <coughs> Knowing human nature, uh, it does mean that we've got to be a lot more careful. So as we do things that enable us to do military things more easily, we've got to pay closer and closer attention to the ethics of war. Um, ethics, one of the things I think is, is important to think about ethics is it's a hedge against self-interest. Uh, so it, it's easy to do things that, that are in our interests. We don't really need to think about that. That's natural for us. Avoiding risk to ourselves is one of those things. But the more we do that, the more we have to, to stop and go, hold on, is this act that's moving in the direction of self-interest actually unethical because it's putting risk on others? Uh, or something like that. So we've got to pay closer and closer attention to the ethics of armed conflict as the threshold for doing armed conflict lowers. All right, one of the issues there obviously is weapons falling into the wrong hands, um, and that's certainly a, a, an important issue. <laughs> weapons <coughs> proliferation matters uh, ethically, of course, um, but that's got to be put into the context of what's being called the democratization of warfare. So that little thing that he's got on his hands, as he points out in the, in the, the video, um, <coughs> is made up of a bunch of existing technologies, facial recognition, um, drone uh, miniaturization technologies, and so on. These are not things that are uniquely military. So one of the things we need to keep in mind with this kind of thing is that it's not, it's not like nuclear weapons. Right? It's different to that. Uh, someone in their basement can't put together a nuclear bomb. Someone in their basement can put together or at least in the near future, we'll be able to put together an autonomous drone. So saying that we should ban nuclear weapons, <coughs> uh, sorry, autonomous weapons because of the danger of they'll proliferate is kind of stupid because they'll happen anyway, right? Um, now, I'm not saying there are, there are no reasons for us to try for a ban, but I think this is not one of them. Uh, so I think ethical constraints need, need to meet this, this principle of likelihood of success. If we're going to say we should ban things because it will have this effect, we need to make sure that it is likely to have that effect. Uh, so we saw in the, the video um, this 
this scenario where all these uh, senators on one side of the house got, got targeted, everybody else got ignored, right? Pretty scary. But actually, it's just a targeted killing. That's all it is. Um, now, we may disagree with the, the, uh, the person behind it. We may disagree with the, the, what's, uh, the, the choice of why they're targeting the, those particular people. But there is nothing fundamentally unethical about targeted killings. It's just a way to identify your enemy. We had, we've, we've gone a long way through <coughs> discussing this in ethics. You know, there was a time when assassination was this terrible thing. Um, but it's all about elites and their relationship to each other. Ultimately, if what you're doing is killing that person because they're your enemy and uh, targeting them by name is the way you can identify them, particularly in an era where the enemy tends to choose not to wear uniforms and self-identify for us, that's appropriate. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with that. Now, of course, in the, in the video, we think that's an act of terrorism. The problem is with terrorism, not with the kind of targeting that's going on. So, in principle, I think we need to recognize that few technologies or capabilities are intrinsically ethical or unethical, what matters is what we do with them. <coughs> okay, this point I think is interesting. Um, the intelligence community had, has no idea who perpetrated the attack. Again, that's not very new. Bad guys have always tried to hide what they do. Um, but I do think it's, and this is not a principle uh, here, more of a question, I think it's worth thinking about whether the issue of attribution is in fact a a principle that we should be introducing into the ethics of armed conflict. Being able to stand up and say, yes, that was us, is that a fundamental requirement? Is this the equivalent of um, the, the part of just war theory, which has kind of fallen out of favor, the idea of public declaration, right? In the, the old days, it was a just war only if you stood up and said, we declare war on you and we're coming. But there were reasons for that. It enabled, it gave the, the enemy a chance to Oh, we're at that point? Okay, sorry, we didn't, mean, we didn't think that things had gone that far. We, we'll back down. Um, and, it, and it gave civilians the opportunity to make preparations. A war is coming to protect themselves. Um, question mark, again, it's still for discussion, but is attribution, given in this new environment, that it, it can be really challenging, particularly with cyber, but also with the use of autonomous systems, um, is that a new principle that we need to, to consider? <coughs> When you can find your enemy using data, even by a hashtag, you can target an evil ideology. It starts up here. Blow, up, blow that up. Uh, I think in principle, what this shows me, so you know, I'm a military ethicist. There are other people who do other kinds of ethics. And for a while, for quite a long time, I've kind of been avoiding this discussion about um, data ethics. Eh, it's not really a, my thing, right? It doesn't fall into my, to my space. It's for other people. But actually, I'm increasingly convinced this is one of the biggest challenges we will face as we advance technologically, as our systems advance technology, and as they tap into personally identifiable information. We really have to think really hard about the ethics of that. We're going to do it. It's going to happen. How do we do it? Under what, what conditions and what circumstances? I think that's one of the biggest challenges that we need to work through today. All right. So at the very end of the video, there's a... Um, uh, a, a, a serious bit, right? The, the, uh, the, the fictional uh, video stops, and there's a talking head by this guy, uh, Stuart Russell, uh, and he essentially is, is saying, "Look, we have this opportunity. We can stop all this happening now. What we should do is ban the emergence of autonomous weapons." Um, and I think his statement is important. He says, "Allowing machines to choose to kill human beings will be devastating to our security and freedom." And that's um, supposedly the takeaway from the video, from the, the, the short film. All right. Well, here's my, my take. Banning autonomous weapons would make absolutely no difference to the scenarios that we just saw on that, that short video clip. Why? Because you can go back and watch it again and imagine that instead of the, the, the uh, systems being fully autonomous, um, there's a human in the loop. There's someone with a bunch of cards going, yeah, that's the person that we want to kill Yes, right? They're making the decision to kill. Um, would it be any different whatsoever? I think not, okay? So it strikes me that what this does is it confuses the issue. There are real issues here for discussion about whether we should let machines make that decision to kill, or whether we can even make sense of that claim. Is it <coughs> making a decision? Um, but these are not this, those issues. These are not the issues that we've seen in the, in the video. It's all about a fusion of different kinds of technologies. Autonomy is part of it, 
But that final decision needn't be autonomous for it to be just as scary as it is. So I think my last principle is that the ethics of military innovation requires getting the question right. And we've got to think hard about what that is. So that's it for me. Thank you. <laughs>